Hello, my name is Courtney Dicenzo, and I'm a product manager within Platform. And today I'm here to introduce Salesforce Private Connect. Salesforce Private Connect keeps communications private by allowing for bi-directional connections between Salesforce and our launch partner, AWS. To do this, Salesforce is deploying a managed private connection. Think of this like a VPN service between Salesforce first party data centers and AWS regions. Within the region, Salesforce deploys a managed transit VPC or virtual private cloud. Customers who are running VPCs within the same region can connect to the managed service through an AWS feature called Private Link. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to create, provision, and tear down private links from within the Salesforce setup experience. Within a Summer 20 org, under the security node and setup, is a feature called Private Connect. Private Connect allows for inbound connections. That is where the traffic originates in AWS and flows into Salesforce. Or outbound connections, where traffic originates in Salesforce and flows out to AWS services. I'm going to demonstrate how to create an outbound connection. To do this, I need to expand my regions. This shows me which AWS regions this org has access to. To create an outbound connection, I need to whitelist the IAM role in my endpoint service. Within my endpoint service, in my customer VPC, I need to go to my whitelisted principles. I need to add to the whitelisted principles the IAM role I copied. This allows the Salesforce managed service to talk to this customer endpoint service. Once that is available, I need to take the service name and copy it. Now I can go create my outbound connection. So from within Salesforce, I click Create Outbound Connection. It defaults to the AWS private link. I give my outbound connection a name, I paste in the service endpoint, and I select the region I want this to run in. I'm going to select No. I want to provision this connection later. By selecting No, it does not automatically provision an endpoint and leaves it in a status of unprovisioned. Now I can provision this at my convenience. I'm going to go ahead and click Actions and click Provision to provision this endpoint. You'll notice that it's allocating an endpoint at the moment. To get the latest status, I need to click Actions, Sync. Here you can see an endpoint was created in the Salesforce Managed Service in a pending acceptance state. In order to accept this, I need to go back into AWS Console. Under Endpoint Connections, you will find my endpoint. Here, I have to accept it. Once it's accepted, it can take five to 10 minutes before the connection becomes available for use. In the meantime, I have another outbound connection already available, my Summer 20 West. I'll demonstrate how we can leverage Summer 20 West within the Salesforce environment. To do this, I need to use a name credential. I have a name credential pointing to a private API in my inventory database inside of AWS. Notice the new lookup field called Outbound Network Connection, and it's pointing at our Summer 20 West private connection. Anytime I make a call out from within Salesforce, leveraging this name credential, it will route through the private connection instead of the public proxy. To demonstrate this, I can show you through an HTTP request, calling that name credential and doing a GET. If I open up the log, you will now see that the callout was successful with a 200 and we are hitting that URL endpoint that's in my name credential. This is a private API. If I try to open this in Postman and try to do the same call, I get a could not get any response error. That's because the API is not exposed to the public internet and only available through my private connection. Speaking of private connections, let's see what the status of my private connection is. If I sync, you'll notice it's in a ready state. I can now send traffic through this connection. However, I would like to tear this down because I no longer need it. From the Actions menu, I click Teardown. I'll see a teardown in progress. To get the latest status, I need to sync yet again. Now that it's in an unprovisioned state, I can either reprovision this, which will create a new private link, or I can go ahead and delete this. So from within Salesforce, I have now demonstrated how to create, provision, tear down, and delete private links using a feature in Summer 20 called Salesforce Private Connect. If you are a developer, private connections are available through the metadata API in Salesforce DX, 
as well as in the Salesforce CLI. Lastly, the pilot is still available until mid-July, so reach out if you are interested in participating. Thank you.